Hello there folks, it's Samantha once again, and we'll go back to another review for the Stallone Marathon. And this time I am reviewing to me the criminally underrated, very, very underrated, in my opinion, Rambo 3. To the point of, if I think Predator 2 is the most underrated sequel of all time, this is probably the, the not even probably, this is the right next to it or right behind it. And I since I have the Rambo collection on Blu-ray and it's just the it, there's no picture of Rambo 3 itself I figure I might as well show this uh, which I have on my wall you can't see it when I do videos but it's on here on top but this is a poster I've always loved love the artwork and the, the army going after Rambo and just the uh, I love that artwork, the bow and arrow, the C4 tip explosive arrows. That's just an epic, epic picture. I always love this poster. It's one of my favorite posters. Probably my favorite Rambo poster. I mean, even if I mean, even if you it's just beautiful artwork. It really is. I love this artwork. I was trying to find a way to put it on there, but um, I couldn't, so I'm put her uh, you're not gonna be able to see it, but anyway, Rambo Three. I know a lot of people hate the film and they were disappointed in the sequel when it came out. It was us against the Soviets, but then we sort of became friendly with Russia and. Gorbachev and Radian became friendly and now the Russians were our friends while well, you have a movie coming out in 1988 in which they're the enemies and the gist of the story Richard Trenna as child man is going there to help some rebels in Afghanistan in which the Soviets are massacring a bunch of people there and uh, Troutman wants Rambo to help and John Rambo goes, you know, my war is over. He's at a Buddhist temple. He just wants to have peace in himself. But then Troutman tells him, you know what? We just chip the pieces away. This is how you are deep down. You know, when you don't come full circle. Which, cool, very cool that in the next film, he literally does come full circle by the end of it. And Troutman gets kidnapped. Rambo goes over and helps the rebels fight the Russians and it's to rescue his friend like all the trailers and teasers said about it and you know I love all four Rambo films it's my favorite film franchise because I don't think there's a bad Rambo film this is the one that gets the most hate and to me it's the most underrated and I know a few friends that this is their favorite Rambo film and I perfectly understand that my favorite is still gonna be Rambo 2 but this is a very close second. I think it's, it's an epic action movie. It has fantastic action sequences that are big, practical, no CGI, and you're never going to see that again. You're never going to see a guy blow up a helicopter with his C4 tipped explosive arrow, all done with practical effects. You're never going to see an ending where a tank and a helicopter go at each other in a battle because that would have either CGI tanks or CGI helicopters or CGI smoke or CGI fire or something while this was all done for real and I love that about this I know this is the superhero Rambo the comic book hero of Rambo but that's what I grew up with that and Rambo 2 made me fall in love with the character made me fall in love with the films it's what got me into the Rambo films and then seeing First Blood and then of course, years later, Ramble 4. What got me into it was Ramble 2 and 3. These are films, are not only are they some of my favorite Sylvester Stallone films, they're some of my favorite action movies, period. Because this is what, to me, 80s action films were. Big, muscled, I mean, he was in the best shape of his career. Whether you want to say it's steroids, whether you want to say it's not, at this point, I don't give a shit, because I think he looked fantastic. And a lot of it he did for real. I know at this time he had a bad falling out with Brigitte Nielsen, 
So I think he wanted to get his frustration out. So he did a lot of stuff for real in this movie, like being dragged under a damn tank or being on a horse with a helicopter right behind him, very close on him, while he's holding a Molotov cocktail. And you can tell it's him doing it. It's, I think that's impressive. Um, I love, I know people get mad at the little bit of humor Rambo has in the movie. I think it's appropriate. I think it works fine. He's not doing stand-up comedy. It's not like he's standing there and going, hey, how's it going? Ding, ding. No, I think the humor works and it's subtle and it's fun. And I think the dialogue is still minimal, but when it's there, you know, I love the bit with the light where he has his blue light. and Someone asks him, what does it do? It turns blue. <laughs> I love that. It's it's matter of fact, and it's like, what the fuck do you think it does? I love that. Or when trauma goes, what do you say, John? Fuck him. I did, to me, it's to the point. It's not Arnold. It's to me, and I think it made perfect sense. And I love that. One thing I get fucking tired of hearing about with this movie is that Will Stallone helped the Taliban. Learn some fucking history. For those who say that, they don't know their history and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because let's go over a few things. Number one, this was 1988. Russia was our enemy and they were massacring people in Afghanistan. And these rebels were just trying to survive on their land. That's what happened in 1988. 1980 is very different than it was today. Number two, the guy who Rambo is helping out, one of the guys Rambo is helping out the rebels, is based on a guy named Ahmad Shah Massad. Massad or Massoud. Maybe Massad. Ahmad Shah Massad. For those who don't know who that is, it's a guy who later on rejected the Taliban and he was against them. He even tried to warn the U.S. about stuff that was going to happen, like 9-11. And he was assassinated by Al-Qaeda a few days before 9-11. So the guy Rambo is helping, the guy, oh, he's based on the guy who's one of the decent guys. Also... Not every single person in Afghanistan is a bad guy. So they're people, just like we're people, and they're people, and he's people, and they're people. Pe it's people being killed, women, children being killed, Rambo's helping them out against forces who don't give a shit. And at the end of the day, the gist of the story is him saving his friend, who would do the same for him. And also, people forget how history changes uh, at one time. The North and the South of U.S. were trying to kill each other. It's called the Civil War. Or how, you know what, I think we in Japan were not the best at one point. I think it's that thing called Pearl Harbor, you know. Um, if you look at the all the stuff going on in North Korea, I guarantee you that every single person in North Korea, they're not all bad guys. I guarantee you there's some people in North Korea who's like, oh man, the fucking government, what they're doing here, but they can't say anything. I guarantee you there are some decent people in North Korea. I guarantee you that. So all this stuff about, you know, people who say, oh, we helped the Taliban, they're just people who are either numbskulls, idiots, or they just hate the movie and it's the easy thing for them to say. Everything up and above to me, I mean, proves otherwise. So people who say that is a what I call FOSS. F-O-S-S. Full of shit syndrome. No, I'm sorry. I know that's a little bit of rant there, but that's one thing I got so fucking tired of hearing about when people talk about this movie. You have to tell a bad. I don't think there was a Taliban back then, and the people he was helping were the people who were against and rejected the Taliban, and I already did that. I've just repeated myself. But anyway... I love the idea of the beginning of the film, that he is trying to have a peaceful life. I like that. He's not in jail. He's not in prison. It shows that after Rambo 2, and when he walked off, he's at a point, at a good place in his life. But he also put in some really good action. 
I love the stick fight. I think the stick fight is very well done. And Stallone was ripped to shit. It's the best shape he's been in. And he was doing that stick fight himself. And some nice movements and a nice kick to the guy's chest. And um, it shows that he's ready to be pushed. But then he, at the last minute, stops and picks the guy up. I think that's a great fight. I, think this, I do think the stick fight is awesome. And he does it for money, but it's money he gives to the Buddhists. The monks, I should say. Kurtwood Smith is with Richard Trenna, and nice to see Kurtwood Smith there a year after Robocop. And Kurtwood Smith will later on be in another Stallone film, Oscar. I love Richard Trenna in this. I miss Richard Trenna. I love that him and Troutman, Rambo and Troutman. You see through the three films how the re relationship grew. How in the first one he was the mentor who you're not sure if he's ready to kill Rambo. And of course the altered ending where Rambo has Troutman kill him. Then there's the second film where he's sort of a confidant. The only guy he can trust. While here they become buddies. They really are buddies. By the end they're shooting side by side against the enemy. I like that. It makes... It's even a build-up of Troutman's character, and I like that. I like that Richard Trenna and Rambo were side-by-side -side together by the end of it. I thought that was really cool. I love how Troutman builds up Rambo, and he's not full of shit. Like, Rambo's this badass. God would have mercy. He won't. I love that. Um, yeah, I have a few little nitpicks. The villain is not as memorable as Brian Dennehy in the first one or Stephen Burkoff in the second one, but I thought the guy still did fine. Also, the after the stick fight and then to the scene where Rambo is in the game with the horse that they, they play, that they pick up the carcass of this animal and they bring it to this little ring over there. It's a little bit slow, but... Watching it again, it really didn't bother me as much. It really didn't. Um, I like the actor that plays his contact that brings Rambo from when he lands in Afghanistan to where he needs to go. I, I thought that guy did a good job acting-wise. I know people get annoyed by the kid. And I think... He didn't bother me. He really didn't bother me. I've seen many worse kid actors. He, I think he did fine. And he's not in the film too much, to be perfectly honest. But, I mean, other than the little slow spot in that moment, and the... What was the other one I was thinking of? The, the villain is not as memorable, but I, I think he still did fine. And Jerry Goldsmith's score... I do think it's a step down from the first two movies, but listen to the end. I still like the score. I do. I It's grown on me. I, I, I do think it is a step down from Rambo 2, because Rambo 2 is my favorite score from Jerry Goldsmith. I do think it's a step down from the score on First Blood, but it's still a good score. You know, listen to it again, just listen to the music as I'm watching the film. I'm like, Jerry Goldsmith still did a good job. <clears throat> Other than that, I love this movie. I love the fact that they put a budget behind it. Uh, the direction was fine. I know originally it was going to be Russell Mulcahy who did Highlander, but him and Stallone had a falling out and Russell Mulcahy was gone, and so they got this guy named Peter McDonald who usually did like second unit or something, and he became the director, and I thought he did fine for what he had to do. I know there's a novel that my friend Mike OCP read, and he said it was boring as shit because there's no action in that. And thankfully, whatever, if that was based on an original script or an older script, thank God they didn't use that because this one is definitely action packed. I love the game of the riding on the horse and getting the carcass to go from point A to point B. It's unique and you don't see in a lot of movies and you see that Stallone is working his ass off in the film he's not just sitting there twiddling his thumbs 
and the Russians come in, they kill everybody, and Rambo gets pissed, and he gets this big fuck-off gun, <laughs> blowing up the helicopter, as all these explosions and shit's going on, women and children are dying, and he's like, fuck that. I love that moment when he gets that. I'm not precisely sure. Is that a 50 caliber as well that he gets? I should know better, but people who are more proficient with guns, if you let me know. And But I love that sequence. And I also love the shot. This is a shot I think is a beautiful shot where it's the aftermath and there's all this smoke around. And Rambo's just sitting there like this. And he's sitting on the ground. And he just looks around at all the devastation and realizes, you know, this is something he needs to do. This isn't right. Doesn't matter what you creed, doesn't matter what your color, doesn't matter what your race. We're all still people. People are people. And now he's going to do this to the rest of his friend, but this just isn't right. And I love that shot. And he gets up and he comes out of the smoke. And I think... And yet people can say it's superhero all they want, and they, they're right, and I love that for it. I do. I love that for it. That's what I want. That's what I wanted in a Rambo three. That's why I personally want it. Since Rambo two is my favorite, I wanted more of that. I want to see four tip explosive arrows. I got more of that. Because later on, people, if people asked why I love this film so much, I could show you. And I would show you the shot. It's on YouTube. It's a scene where he gets on top of the mountain. He gets the C4 tip explosive on the arrow. And he blows up a fucking helicopter right in front of him. Bam! I'm like, that's why I love this movie. That's badass. That's one of the most badass things I've ever seen in my fucking life. He got an arrow. A C4 tipped explosive, he blew up a fucking helicopter and told her to kiss his ass. And that's why I love this movie. That's why I love this fucking film. That's why I feel this is underrated. It's technically well done. I think Stone does perfectly fine as Rambo. I think the supporting cast did fine. The Rebels, the villain, it's not like he was a bad actor. He doesn't have a big... He doesn't have the biggest presence, but it's not like he was a bad actor. I don't think he was a bad actor. I, I loved Richard Trenna in it. The It's not like Jerry Goldsmith's score is bad. I just think it was a step down from Rainbow 2, but it's still a at least competent score. And to me, what listened in fairly decent score. The the stuff Stallone did, where you know, he's again getting under a real fucking tank and being rolled on the ground under the tank, going in and you know throwing knives in the people's necks, uh, trying to rescue Troutman, uh, all goes haywire, machine gunning people, blood squibs, big bloody practical blood squibs, fucking people up with machine guns and grenades. Like this one shot when he throws a grenade and there's a little bridge that when it blows up it collapses, these pe two people fall down. And you have this big rushing guy that shoots something and Rambo jumps out of the way. Very well done stunt, jumping out of the way of the explosion. Gets a little shrapnel, well, little thing on the side of him. And... His contact and this kid followed him. And the, the kid gets shot. He doesn't die, but he gets shot. And Rambo puts him on his shoulder. He's like, choo, 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 to all these bad guys. And get into the sewer. He hides under the water. The bad guys come in. He comes up like a badass. Um, he gets the kid and the guy away. He has to do surgery on himself, which I know is unrealistic, but I don't give a fuck. Because, A, I'm like, if I was as ripped as him, you know, if you're that ripped, you could probably survive. I could buy someone surviving it. If it was Woody Allen or fucking, you know, me who got that, I'd be dead. 
But if I was as ripped as this guy was in this movie, to me, that wound is like getting hit by a pebble. And I believe it. And, you know, the whole thing, and yeah, it's unrealistic, but it looked cool. And I bought it hooked, line, and sinked when I was a kid. I watch it, like, I buy it. <laughs> you know, he puts his dumb powder, and I love the effect. Maybe that's why I buy it, because I love the effect they did, where when he puts it, you see the fire go through the wound as it's on Stallone. Like this wound that punctured through on his side here. And you see the fire go, to cauterize it. And that's where he like goes to the ground and I think after that pretty much passes out as anyone would. But I do think that's a really good makeup effect, like how they did that. I thought it was pretty damn nice. And then he goes back for Troutman, he's climbing that mountain, you know, breaking people's necks, you know, did Troutman some other survivors, getting a helicopter, you know, helicopter blowing up what do you call that? Uh, towers, blowing up towers. C4 took explosive arrows to fucking helicopters. Uh, they have to crash land. And I love the shower. Again, it's Stallone in the shot. As his explosion right behind him, running. You saw the Stallone did a lot of the stuff by himself. I guess because he was just like, I need to do something and just fuck it. Whatever happens, fuck it. <laughs> And I appreciate that. I could tell Stallone worked his ass off physically for this movie. And I love the hunting in the caves. I love that stuff where he uses the blue light on the arrow. Sometimes he's using C4 to explosive arrows to blow up people. Sometimes just regular arrows. Uh, oh, of course, I love the, the fight with the Russian and in the struggle and you know, Rambo's getting bear hugged to death, and he does this, I don't know if Stallone did this kick, if someone who's more knowledgeable on the movie than me, you can let me know, did, if it was Stallone or if it was Stunt Double that did this kick, because it's a really cool looking kick, sort of like a, a roundhouse kick that he does to the Russian, again, whether it be Fabio, whether it be a Studio Red Band, anyone who's more, if you're more familiar with the movie than I am, if you know whether Stallone did that roundhouse kick or not, but whoever did is a beautiful looking roundhouse kick after he put pulled the pins of the grenades and this is just a great death. You you pull the pins off the grenades that the guy was wearing, you roundhouse kick him after putting this rope around him, he falls through this hole, he gets hung, and then he blows up. I love the shit out of it. I fucking love the shit out of it. Badass. That's why you don't fuck with John Rambo. And then you get to the end of the film, after he's fucked people up with, you know, hunting people, which that's one thing I missed in Rambo 4. I wish there was a scene where he's hunting people one by one, like in the other films, because this is such a... I love the scenes in the cave. And it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And then when you think that said, no, now you got the whole army... And they're hiding out in this little hole, and Rambo has a machine gun with a grenade launcher, and he's blowing trucks up. And then the rebels come, and he's shooting people. He gets on the back of a truck. He shoot more people. He's throwing grenades. Uh, he's on a horse with Molotov cocktails. He gets blown up near him, and he falls to the ground. He's fucking up. He's throwing Molotov cocktails under tanks. He's shooting people. And then he gets on a one-on-one -on -one fight with a helicopter. And yes, I know you can ask, why the fuck doesn't the bad guy just go up and blow up the tank? I know. I know. But what can I say? The bad guy's an idiot. And for being an idiot, he fucking dies for it. And I didn't care because I love the movie. And I didn't care because I got a kick-ass scene with a tank and a helicopter real time going through this battlefield going and playing chicken with each other I never thought I would see a helicopter and a tank playing chicken with each other on a collision course I'll never see it again but you know what I'm glad I got to see it at least one fucking time and if I need to if I need to sacrifice logic for entertainment I'm willing to do it but then you better fucking pay off the entertainment because if you sell it short 
then you're shit out of luck. And in my opinion, this did not sell it short. It was a real tank, a real helicopter, and then they smash into each other. You know, he shoots the bad guy, and then he blows up, and Rambo gets out of it because he's a badass. And him and Troutman, you know, say their goodbyes. He gives his little necklace that he got Rambo to to the kids, sort of passing off the torch, um, but not in a stupid way where then 30 minutes of the film it's just the kid. It's just okay. It's a nice gesture. He goes off, and then. goes off into Ramble 4, which is another awesome movie. I... This is just, to me, a badass action film. It's fun. It's entertaining. I think the action sequences are superb. I will use that word. G.I. Joe movies have nothing on this. You watch these new G.I. Joe movies, even the one with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. I defy anyone. You take the action scenes in this movie, then you put the action scenes in G.I. Joe 1 or 2, and you compare, side by side compare them. This beats the ever loving, loving fuck. The ending of this movie is what G.I. Joe should have been. I mean, I, I love Stallone in the movie. Rambo was an utter badass in the film. C4 tipped explosive arrow fun. Ex uh, exciting finale. I love the hunting of folks in the caves. Um, and I think the support, I don't think there's bad acting in it. I think all the supporting actors did their jobs, what they're supposed to do. You tell that Stallone worked his ass off. Um, again, I don't know if he did that one roundhouse kick, because you don't see his face. If he didn't, okay, that's fine. He, but uh, if he did, pretty cool. Either way, it looks like a cool shot. Either way, it looks pretty damn awesome. And I like the idea of him trying to save his friend. It made it different from the other films. It made it more personal. And because we've seen Richard Crenna in the first two movies, it made sense to me. And it made the story, it made me understand why Rambo was doing what he was doing. Because he did the same for me. And I like, it was great to see these two guys fighting and actually see Troutman fighting. Uh, being a fan of Richard Crenna, it was nice to see that character get to do something. Instead of just sitting on the sidelines. It was nice to see him be a part of the action. You know, I love, again, people make fun of the bits of humor, but I thought they were funny. You know, it turns blue, you know. You know Fuck them. I love that. It's one of my favorite lines from Rambo. This is badass. You know, what do you say, John? He could go to some diatribe about the human ethics or about violence, or he can say, fuck them, and shoot the shit out of them. And that's what I love about this movie. And... To me, this movie was supposed to be popcorn entertainment. And I think it did that as well as it can be. I really do. This film was a disappointment at the box office. I know it made some money foreign-wise, but in the U.S., it did not do that well. I don't even think it made half the money that Rambo 2 did in the U.S. Because I think in the U.S. it only made 60-some million, give or take. So it was considered a disappointment. I don't think Stallone likes this movie. I mean, he Stallone keeps changing his mind on this movie. It's like sometimes he's say, like, oh, well, you know, it was because it was a bad timing. And then, like, when you watch stuff, when Rambo 4 came out, I was like, yeah, Rambo 3 was a bad note to end it on. I don't, that's why I want to do Rambo 4. So, uh, Sly, make up your mind. Do you like this movie or do you not like this movie? Which is it? Because I didn't say... I love this movie to death. I think it's an awesome, underappreciated action film. Because that's where you go in. You go into an action film to see the action. I get my badass hero. I get some well done action. And I didn't think it was boring at all. I think it hit what it was supposed to do. 
And again, my only little teeny nitpicks is the little bit of pacing between the stick fight and the game with the horses. The villain is not as memorable as the previous ones. And the Jerry Goldsmith score, I do think he's a step down from First Blood and Ramble 2. But the villain, he did not do a bad job acting-wise. The pacing, it wasn't that much of a problem watching it. And the score is still a fairly decent score. So all in all, I love Ramble 3. I did a review of it before that's on my channel. So if you want to watch that, feel free. And thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you later. Bye-bye. I, I do think this is a very underrated film. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Teach their own. But I never really understood the hate for this movie. I never did. So thanks for watching. And when I was a kid watching action movies, this was the kind of stuff I grew up with. This is what this Ramble 2 and Ramble 3, those are kind of movies that got me into films. Because yes, I love artistic films as well. 127 Hours, Shawshank Redemption, you know, I like Forrest Gump and Castaway and many others, but what got me into it was the fun entertainment value. And that's what got out of films like this. Uh, and I'm happy with it. So this is like the third time I'm saying goodbye, but take care, and we will see you later for Ramble 4. Bye-bye.